grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is in first, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. And let me read this text. It particularly applies to fathers and to all of us, but listen to the words, and then I will preach on this text. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And here indeed we groan. We long to put on our heavenly dwelling, so that by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we sigh with anxiety, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. And so we are always of good courage, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage. We would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive good and evil according to what he has done in the body. Thus far, our text. Well, dear members and friends of grace, and especially a greeting to you fathers on this special day. Speaking of fathers, I heard a great story at a retirement ceremony. One time a teenage daughter who had only been driving four or five months sat down in the living room with her dad. He had just worked late and come home from work. And they began the conversation by talking about the family car and what she had learned and how everything underneath the hood worked. Well, she spoke up that night and said, Dad, there's just too much water in the carburetor. He said, he said, no, dear. Remember what I told you? Water goes in the radiator. Gas goes in the carburetor. Well, she says, I still think there's too much water in the carburetor. Well, you're wrong. Well, she says, you come outside and I'll show you just as soon as the tow truck pulls the car out of the neighbor's swimming pool. <laughs> now, those of you that have raised kids, whether fathers or mothers, know that you can identify with this father. We've had three, and each one of them had their separate little accidents with the, with the family car. And you can, you can realize by the text that I read to you how maybe we might react to such an occurrence, whether the car is in the neighbor's swimming pool or whether it's on a street somewhere and kind of bumped. Usually we say, did anybody get hurt? Are you okay? And then they say, yeah, everything is fine. Nobody's hurt. And then the reaction goes something like this, a big groan, like it says in the text. And maybe we pull the jacket out of the closet and say, I think I need to go for a walk. And we fathers then take a little stroll around the block so that we don't quite explode and we cool off a little bit. This is just like our text. The text says that Paul tells us that we do have anxiety in this life, that stuff happens, and sometimes we don't have any control over it, and all it is is a series of reactions. And a lot of times, the best thing we can do is just groan and then cool off and then talk about it. The text is really an explanation of the hardships of the ministry of Paul. And he says it's not easy. Addressing the church at Corinth, he talks about 
all the hazards of life. And some happen because people deserve them, and some happen that just happens, and that, that's the reality of facing life today. That's sin and its consequences. And so we groan like the webbed bridge that the elephant goes across, and it groans with the weight of that elephant. At times, fathers, mothers, family members, we, we groan. We, we, we love our kids and our family so much that it seems like it just puts it that way. Paul speaks of the groaning of creation and believers looking forward with hope to eternal life so we can put on that permanent dressing. Paul further gives another reason for groaning. He says the problems of this world offer to us groaning, anxiety, because sometimes we can't do anything about it. Think of what's happening in our world today. Think of the shootings that are going on in even small towns. Think of everything else that has happened. Trouble on the streets. In San Diego, you can be walking down in, in South San Diego somewhere as a bystander and all of a sudden get shot. You know, those things, those things are, are, make us groan and make us say, boy, boy, we're clothed with this temporary tent. We need that strong building around us. And even as we look at cities that are wiped out by tornadoes, you know, it, make, it makes us groan and feel for those people and their families. That's why this Sunday is loaded with forgiveness. When you look at all the text, you look at the psalm reading, you look at the gospel and it says, you know, that this sinner, this woman, she deserves much because she loves much and, and she, she was a great sinner but then she got the more forgiveness. I think back of the, of the goofs I made as a father, you know, with my kids. And that's the only thing I can do is I groan about it and then realize that God forgives. God forgives. And he wipes that away because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So fathers, if anything today, realize that no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter when you lost your cool, Jesus Christ forgives you and announces that forgiveness. And the assurance of that forgiveness is the body and blood that we receive from the altar. Christ's very own. That's the wonders about being a Christian. That's the great thing. And when he does that, then we are supposed to let that go. Think about Peter and walking on the water and, and all of a sudden he, he started looking around at the waves and he got, his focus was off of the Lord and he began to sink and the waves began to capsize over him. I don't mean that we can just laugh off a, a, a car in a swimming pool or other tragedies. But what I do mean is that we live in the sense of grace and that God covers all of that, those things. And sometimes they're just material things, whether it's a bump in the car or whether it's something else. Maybe it's something we said and just innocently and all of a sudden the whole family is, is all torn up because of that. Well... Jesus says we, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb, that the sacrifice that he has made is for us, and that we are to walk then wisely, not as fools. Remember that the Lord gives us the confidence to live in this life and realize that it's only temporary. I mean, that's the big score for us, isn't it? It's not that we say, you know, oh, well, eat, eat pie in the sky by and by. No, it's not that way. 
but it means that our real home is in heaven with him for eternity. And so that when we look at the past, we face, just like David had to face what he did to Uriah in the Old Testament. And Nathan said, you're the man. You know, you have to face the consequences of what you've done. Well, we need to do that, but we also need to realize that the mountain of forgiveness that God gives us, and he, he never makes light of our groaning. He meets us where we are. It doesn't matter where we are on the hill of life. We may be down in the valley. He will walk with us, and he'll walk with us to live and walk and rejoice, knowing that we live forever with him. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.